generously support her this morning. All right, so back to school, as John said, we're in uh, three of uh, four weeks. We're going to remind everyone one more week next week that we're uh, still back to school. So the first week, we looked at uh, Welcome Back. So what we talked about here is um, if you're brand new, if you've been around here for 10 years, like you are welcome here. This is uh, God's house. It's God's kingdom. Um, everybody, people of all ages, races, and nations uh, are welcome in his church. So last week we looked at recess. Um, I made the, sorry, I made the uh, announcement last week that recess is God's idea. Um, he came up with it in Genesis chapter 2, the second book of the Bible. He calls it Sabbath. So last week there was a plea to uh, slow down and get some rest. Uh, take care of yourself. Next week we're going to conclude the series. Next week's message is how to avoid detention. So uh, next week we're going to talk about how to make uh, really, really good, sound, biblical choices in life. Uh, two weeks from today, we're starting a brand new series. I'm excited about this one. There's another insert in your bulletin this morning. Um, it's a big insert, and it says hashtag be kind. Um, we have 30 days of kindness. Now, if you're involved in any of the local public schools, uh, you've heard a lot about this. We're partnering with the schools and doing our own kindness campaign. So on one side of the, uh, <coughs> one side of the sheet, you're going to see um, a, a Bible reading plan for 30 days. All these... Uh, Bible readings have to do with kindness. In fact, um, the six or seven before the Sunday are going to have to do with the sermon that's going to be coming up. So it's a great way to prepare for uh, Sunday's message. But it's a great way also to be informed um, by God's words on how to be kind to one another. Now, on the other side, it's really cool. I just sat down one morning and I came up with uh, 30 ways um, that you can be kind to each other. Now, it's doubtful that all of you are going to be able to do all 30 of these. Some of them are kind of situational and depending upon your age, but most of us can do most of these things. Um, so really, really cool stuff coming up with the um, kindness campaign. And we're also going to be doing um, hashtag be kind in our small groups as well. So our, in, our, in our life groups, um, you know, we'll talk about it here on Sunday mornings, then also in our uh, life groups throughout the week. Um, this week, we're looking at uh, social studies. So the last of three inserts near Bolton this week is this little handwritten thing by me, and it talks about um, two things we're going to be looking at this morning. Number one is anxiety, and number two is uh, comparison. So as I look at our society today, as I look at our culture, um, two of the biggest issues that I see is one, anxiety, number two, uh, comparison. So one of the things you can do if you have a pen or a pencil, um, you can actually kind of write where you see yourself on the anxiety scale. Um, you know, are you as cool as a cucumber? Are you ready to have a nervous breakdown? Um, you know, are you somewhere in between? Um, you know, do you hardly ever compare yourself to others, or is this comparing like something that you do a lot? And all we're doing there is just uh, taking a look at where we are and. Hopefully, we're going to take some steps in the right direction of going to where God wants us to be. So I want to just give us a little bit of framework for both these anxiety. 40 million um, American adults um, frequently suffer from some level of anxiety. One in six of us actually, during the course of a year, um, would take a drug to medicate the anxiety that we deal with. Now, anxiety, it can be a million different things. Um, you know, you could, like, you know, see your kid on the morning that he's uh, going to take a test. Um, you know, that could cause anxiety. Um, I went to a football game on Friday night, you know, Millard West versus uh, Millard North, and I'm guessing most of the players, I'm guessing most of the parents, I'm guessing most of the uh, coaches, you know, were anxious about this game they're going to play. Uh, some of you dropped a kid off at kindergarten um, just a few weeks ago, and that was an anxious moment for you, and that was an anxious moment for your kid. Some of you could be um, uh, uh, worrying about retirement. Um, you, know, you just sit down, and you get your little statement at the end of the month, and you're like, man, how am I going to pull this off? And you worry about that. And you know, Some of us, it could be like a deeper issue, like we're at a party, maybe like with friends or with family, and um, even though we're surrounded by loved ones, and we're all laughing, we're having fun, we're in this joyous place, um, we can't experience that joy because we're too consumed about worrying about being alone. You know, so anxiety, it, it just means different things for 
for different people. Now, some people say that peace is going to be the opposite of anxiety. Um, I would say that freedom is going to be the opposite of anxiety. Yeah, if you've ever experienced the shackles of anxiety, um, you know what I'm talking about. You know that uh, uh, these beliefs, this behavior, this emotional status does not allow you to experience the freedom that God wants us to uh, experience. Now, comparison is going to be the other social issue. Um, uh, it was like, what did I say, 18.1% of all American adults suffer from anxiety. 100% uh, of all American adults suffer from comparison. Um, and if you're not part of uh, that 100%, you're in this thing called denial because uh, you do at times compare yourself to other people. Um, so we compare a lot of things, right? We compare um, our kids to other people's kids. We compare our clothes, our house, our cars, our health, our financial status. Uh, we compare our lifestyles to others. And, and we usually lose, right? And it, even if you win, um, well, I'm better than them. Even if you win, then you still lose. Um, you know, because all of a sudden, like, there's this, uh, there's like this false sense of, of, of pride that's going on. Um, now, you can argue that the um, contentment is going to be the opposite of comparison, and, you know, it, it, that's close. But I think the opposite of uh, comparison is freedom. Just like I think that freedom's the opposite of anxiety. Um, if you are doing the things that you don't want to do so that you compare well to other people, Okay, if you're doing something you don't want to do um, to compare yourself well to other people, that's not freedom. Um, it's like this treadmill that you're on and it's going faster and the incline's getting steeper and you're not enjoying this, but you're doing better than the person next to you. And that's not, uh, that's not freedom. So uh, look at this one on the screen. Stop comparing and start preparing. Stop worrying and start praying. Um, your life will be amazingly different, and it will be amazingly better. Just think of all the time um, that you waste worrying. Think of all the time that you waste, like, uh, comparing yourself to others, and, like, just stop doing that. Um, don't compare, prepare. You know, don't worry, uh, uh, pray. Now, you're going to experience freedom when you do this, uh, so here's what freedom is. Freedom is you being able to be fully yourself without seeking permission from anybody. You know, so like a word here would be like authentic, genuine. Um, like you don't have to ask anybody's permission to be yourself. Um, you know, you're not overly anxious about what the future holds because you're content with who you are today. Um, you're not necessarily concerned with how you stack up against other people because you're becoming the true, authentic self that God has created you to be. Now, um, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about um, anxiety. Now, there's a few words that are similar to anxiety. Um, they're not quite the same, but I'm going to like use them all very similar this morning. So you have uh, fear. You have worry, you have uh, apprehension, you have nervous. So for those of you who really deal with these things, um, the writings from Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25, they're going to totally 100% resonate with you. And that is this, anxiety weighs down the heart. It just does. Anxiety is not God's plan for your life. Fear is not God's plan. These things, they just, they just weigh you down. Um, Proverbs is 100% spot on with that one. Um, you know what it's like to have fear shut you down. You know what it's like to be in the middle of a happy place um, and you're worried about something that may or may not happen in the future. Like, you know what it's like to wear those shackles and not have the freedom that God intends for you to have. So I was at a play a while back and... Um, it was like this wonderful play, these wonderful actors, they had like practiced really hard, it's a brilliant story, and about halfway through the play, I realized, like I just kind of felt light. Um, I don't usually feel too light these days, but I kind of felt light, and uh, I realized I didn't have my cell phone with me. Um, I'm like, oh man, uh, I had went to the bathroom before the play, I had went to the little restaurant area before the play, 
And like, do you think I enjoyed the last half hour of the play? I didn't enjoy it at all because I was so worried and so anxious um, about having lost my cell phone. You know, so got back out to the car, and guess what? Um, the cell phone was in the little console um, where I put it where I dr when I drive. I just forgot to take it with me. In here, anxiety caused me to miss this really cool moment in life. You know, so fear, worry, anxiety, apprehension, these things will cause us to miss, many times for no reason at all, some of life's most precious moments. So you could be watching like your kid's uh, soccer game. And, you know, your kid's not gonna play soccer forever. Um, and you're so worried about your job that you can't enjoy the kid's soccer game. Yeah, you, know, you, uh, you could be holding a baby. Um, you, know, you just had a baby, and like this baby, you're not going to be able to hold this baby forever because the baby's going to grow. Um, but you're so worried about um, paying for this baby's college tuition in 18 years, um, and you can't enjoy the moment. Now, Corey Ten Boom, she's this beautiful Dutch writer. Um, she lived during World War II. Um, just some of the best writings that I've ever read in my life. And she says, worrying does not empty tomorrow of its troubles. It empties today of its strength. That's good stuff. Um, some of you could actually like, take a picture of that one on your phone and like, put it on your Instagram account so you remember it or something. Um, that's what worry will do. It doesn't help us deal with tomorrow any better, but it certainly ruins today. Worry is like putting... Uh, you know, covering today's sunshine with, uh, you know, tomorrow's clouds. Um, so Jesus, this is nothing new. I mean, like, yeah, I said, like, this is one of the two things I observe in the United States today in 2018 is, like, anxiety. Jesus talked about this because Jesus knew that we are an anxious people. He knew that 2,000 years ago, and he knew that 2,000 years from then, which is today, like, we would still be anxious. So Jesus says, don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today is enough trouble for today. So you got issues, right? Um, tomorrow is not quite as certain as you wish it was going to be. But enjoy the play. You know, just cheer at the soccer game and don't worry about work. Um, you know, hold the baby and love absolutely every moment of it. Yeah, so we're going to talk about just a few ways to be less anxious. Um, in your bulletin insert, you can just jot these down. You can put this on your refrigerator this week um, about ways to experience less anxiety. Number one is to pray. Now, okay, I know this sounds simplistic. I know I'm a preacher. I know that you would expect me to start at this place. Um, but I want to tell you the best answers are usually pretty darn simple. And we find in uh, Philippians chapter 4, Paul says, don't worry about, what does he say? Don't worry about... Um, anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for what he has done. Um, that right there is great advice. I remember like when we were raising money um, to like build this building. It was, you know, like in the beginning of our capital campaign, we were working with the architects and the building team, trying to find something that was affordable, that would fit us all. You know, for the most part, we're a lot of fairly young families. Um, you know, we didn't have, like, that one big donor that was going to give us just, like, a ton of money. And I found myself uh, really consumed with anxiety that we are going to be able to pull this off or not. Um, I, I just struggled with it. I'd go to these meetings, and I'd struggle. I'd look at the numbers. The campaign consultant would tell us, and I would, I would struggle. And I, God, I don't know if we can get to this place. And, like, I just found myself, and I, I, I this has got to stop. Like, this is consuming me. You know, so I took it to God and I prayed. You know, like, it was a journey. It was a journey of about probably three to five months. Um, and I'll tell you what, it was an amazing experience to put this in God's hands. Um, and for us, it wasn't about, like, getting enough money and, you know, finding a plan that's going to suit us. Um, you know, as I look back on that, it was a personal journey for me. God was saying, like, you know, Craig, things are going to be fine. Um, this is an amazing church, and if you're at 195th in Harrison or if you're at Millard West, like, 
things are going to be great. Um, yeah, I learned that maybe there's a bigger and a better plan than you know building here. Um, you know, when I go talk to people about money, uh, it, it almost became like a spiritual thing and not a, a monetary thing. Um, it works. Like, what I discovered is, and look up on the screen, you can't pray and worry at the same time. You can't do it. Try it. Um, you're not going to be able to pray and worry at the same time, so pray and let pray overcome your worry. Number two um, is uh, relate. So I think part of our anxiety today is from this isolation that we live. Now, you can be in close proximity with somebody, and you can totally be alone. I'm talking about, like, relate, like, you know, have a tribe, have people, um, have encouragers, have supporters, be the encourager, be the supporter. Yeah, I was, uh, before I went to the football game on Friday, we had a guy that was in the hospital, woke up and was on his own bed, went to the doctor, the doctor sent him to the hospital, he had a surgery on uh, Friday afternoon. Now, obviously, he was anxious about this. Um, you know, you wake up in your own bed and you have a surgery like eight hours later, that's something to be concerned about, and he's got an issue that he needs to be concerned about. But he wasn't alone. Um, he had two friends that were there with him, and when I was there, he had three friends that were there with him. And I'll tell you what, like, it was this really cool experience to see this man be surrounded by people that deeply care about him. He was not having, I mean, it did not eliminate his anxiety, but it certainly reduced it. You know, it didn't, like, you know, totally, like, get rid of his fear, but there's a whole lot less of it. So Galatians chapter 6, verse 2, I love this verse. Uh, here it says, share each other's burdens. Share each other's burdens and fulfill the law of Christ. And I didn't plan it this way, but this is probably going to be the single best plug for a life group that I can give. Um, you know, as I talk to people in our church, um, we just have hundreds of stories over the last decade of people sharing each other's burdens and fulfilling Christ's law. Basically, we have a bunch of people that say, gosh, you know, um, I'm going to have to, uh, um, you know, send my kid to college, and I'm not quite sure if I'm ready for this. Then all of a sudden, you have someone across the table from you, and they say, you know, I did this three years ago, and gosh, it was tough. Um, you know, we took her over to Lincoln, and we left, and things were different around the house, but, um, you know, they got a little bit better, and we got to see her, and she would come back, and it was just this amazing experience to see her blossom and bloom and flourish. Um, you don't have to take that journey alone. Yeah, I see this with, um, like, in the recovery community. Um, you don't get over this anxiety on yourself. You do it in a recovery group. I see this with cancer patients all the time. Um, you know, all of a sudden you got all these treatments that are right in front of you, and when I ever find anybody in the church that is going through this, I always try to connect them with someone that's been through it before because it lessens the anxiety. Like, here's an example of someone that's done this and been there, and, um, you know, we can do this together. There's a song out on the radio nowadays. Um, my little guy, especially the sixth grader, he likes to listen to, like, the current music on channel two on XM, and um, the phrase is this, um, I like me better when I'm with you. Um, here's the guy that sings the song, and um, that's what a friend is. Like, a friend helps us, um, I mean, I don't know who this kid is, but this is brilliant stuff. Like, I like me better when I'm with you, that's what a friend does, is it helps us like ourselves better. It diminishes the anxiety and increases the freedom. Number three, um, is uh, to dare. So here's where I want to go with this. Um, there's some of us that have been so afraid and fearful that we've been moved to inaction and inactivity. We just really have. Like, we get so afraid that we don't want to move. And, you know, most of us uh, have been there, and some of us are there now. Like, we don't want to have a difficult conversation with somebody because we're afraid of their reaction. Um, you want to go out on that first date with somebody and you can't like quite hit the last button on the text message because you're afraid of rejection. Um, 
you uh, fear being a bad parent to the little ones that God has entrusted you to. And, like, we fear failure. Like, we fear trying to move to the next level. So what we do um, is uh, we stay put in the land of safety, sacrificing possibility on the altar of certainty. Um, so I want you to know that like anxiety and fear is not necessarily a bad thing. It's a natural thing. So the kid sees the bully at school, and all of a sudden there's anxiety. Um, you know, the runner sees the mountain lion, and all of a sudden there's anxiety. Um, the sales executive is called to the office at 4 o'clock on a Friday afternoon, and yeah, there's anxiety. Now, anxiety is good when it produces readiness and results. Anxiety is destructive when it overanalyzes and paralyzes. So God knows this. God knows that anxiety is going to be part of our life. So do you know what the most common phrase um, found in the Bible is? It's not to love. That's the most important Jesus says. But the most common phrase found in the Bible is do not be afraid. Do not fear. You see it all over the place. Um, it actually appears in the Bible 365 times. I don't know if God put it in there intentionally that way, so there's one for each day, but that's how many times it's in there. So Joshua chapter 1, verse 9 says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Um, so like this basic human problem we have uh, is that we spend more time and energy avoiding what we fear um, then we pers uh, spend pursuing our dreams and our goals. So I have this buddy, he doesn't go to church here, and I'll talk about him because he doesn't go to church here. Um, <laughs> you don't know who he is, and uh, he doesn't watch either. So um, I was talking to him a while back, and he has this brilliant idea. Like, it is absolutely brilliant. Um, it is to start this company, and it's going to be something that he absolutely is passionate about and loves doing. Um, it's going to be something that provides an amazing service and makes people's lives better. Um, he's actually got this team of people that he could call on, and I th he thinks they would join him on the journey. And I, I think, and he thinks as well, that he could make a lot of money doing this. Now, he's had this idea for a couple years, um, and he's still working his job downtown. And I said, why are you still working at your job downtown? Like, this is going to work. And he says, well... Um, I got these kids, you know my kids, and they got health insurance with this job downtown, and I get a check every two weeks, and yeah, I like the people I work with, and it's all right. Um, it, it's secure. It's a guarantee. So I looked at my friend, you know, I told him, I said, I got a guarantee for you. Um, I got a guarantee that if you don't do this, um, you're going to be filled with a whole bunch of regret. I got a guarantee that um, you're going to grow old wondering what could have been had you done this brilliant idea. Yeah, that's, that's my guarantee. Um, you know, what he is doing is he is sacrificing possibility on the altar of security. Giving into your fears is the most convenient way to dismantle your dreams and humiliate your, uh, your hopes. Um, you know, fear isn't bad. Like, it's natural. It's normal. Um, the fear of fear, letting fear overcome us um, is absolutely, that, that, one's, that one's tragic. Um, whoever learns to be ultimate, uh, whoever learns to be anxious in the right way, um, yeah, there's some challenges. I got to think through a few things. I got to pray. I got to plan. I got to relate. I got to prepare. But I'm not going to, like, hit the gas pedal because of this. Um, or the brake pedal because of this. I'm going to hit the gas pedal, and I'm going to move forward into the dreams that God has for me. Um, so don't let our anxiety prevent us from pursuing God's purposes. Um, don't do that. You know, as, as parents, um, don't let worry, don't let fear consume you. Um, do the absolute best job that you can. You know, kids, um, middle school kids, high school kids, elementary kids, if you're in here, um, don't let fear cause you to miss opportunities 
that you're going to regret later in life. Be bold, be strong, be courageous. You know, a little bit of rejection, a little bit of failure is, is actually not a bad thing because those things are going to set up um, prosperity and success in the future. All right, so good news and bad news. Um, there's this whole part on comparison. Um, that's the good news. The bad news is you don't get to hear it this morning because uh, I didn't realize the part on anxiety was going to be that big. Um, but I will preach that one some other time, and I've already got a sermon prepared, so I'm excited about that. So um, I want to talk about, you know, we're going to share communion here, and I want to, as I do this, explain what it must have been like for Jesus and the disciples on the last night. So Jesus, um, all of a sudden, he told the disciples that um, this is going to be the last time they gather together. And he's going to die the next day, and all of a sudden, anxiety totally had to fill the room, right? Like, here's the guy that took care of them. Here's the guy that led them. Here's the guy that they all loved. And all of a sudden, he's saying, in, in 24 hours, like, everything is going to change. Um, so that was a setting that Jesus was in. And Jesus, at that point, he would have blessed the bread, gave thanks. He would have broke the bread, which means he's preparing to eat. And then he said, uh, as he broke the bread, this is my body that is given for you when you eat of this, do so in remembrance of me. So one of the things that I want us to remember as we come forward um, is the constant reminder of Christ when he says, you know, don't be afraid. Do not fear. Don't worry about tomorrow. That's what I want us to remember. You know, I want us to remember that, you know, that the worrying isn't going to do us any good. Um, it's a waste of time. And what if we could, like, instead of worry, what if we could pray and what if we could prepare? So later in the meal, Jesus, he blessed the wine. He gave thanks and said, friends, this is my um, blood. It's the blood of the new covenant that has been forgiven, uh, given for you in the forgiveness of your sins. When you drink of this, do so in remembrance of me. So here, like, I think there's a lot of us that carry anxiety from our past. Yeah, we've done this, we've been this, um, therefore our future is going to be the same. And Jesus says it doesn't have to be that way. This is my blood. It's the blood of the new covenant that has been given for you and the forgiveness of your sins. When you drink this, remember this. Remember not to worry. Remember that you're forgiven. So let us pray. Almighty God, I come to you and I pray for this bread and this juice that is before us. Lord, may they represent the, the body and the blood of Christ for each of us. God, I want to pray right now specifically, if there's anyone that's just come here this morning and worry is consuming their life, Lord, if there's anyone that's here this morning that um, anxiety is just getting the best of us, Lord, I, I pray this morning that, um, that you'll just uh, reach out to us. Lord, give us strength. Fill us with courage. God, help us uh, to pray um, and to start there and know that um, you are bigger and better than any of our fears. Lord, uh, give us relationships that will uh, offer us life at, at new levels and we just know that we're not going through this journey alone. And, and Lord, I, I pray for all of us that you'll help us to dare, that you'll help us to be courageous, that you'll allow us to do things that we have not been able to do before. God, if, if security, if comfort has been our highest and our biggest value, God, we ask that you re re replace that with um, you know, pursuing our, our, our dreams and, and living this life that you intend us to live. So God, together now in one voice, we... Come and pray the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, so here's how we do this at the Wire's Edge. If you're new to us, as we've done.